There are many incredible reasons to visit the islands of Tahiti, not least their crystal clear lagoons, lush Polynesian jungles, dramatic volcanic landscapes and luxurious overwater hotels. But in our opinion, the very best way to fully experience this watery paradise is via small ship cruising, allowing effortless and pampered travel amongst some of French Polynesia's most iconic islands and atolls. There are 121 in total, but with limited time, you need to see the very best. And yes, a cruise would have already curated a trip you will never forget. And it continues here. Welcome to part three. If anyone tells you that the sails on Wind Spirit are just for show and don't really do anything other than look pretty against the glorious backdrop of the Society Islands here in French Polynesia, then I'm about to burst their bubble. Here we are with all six triangular sails deployed, all four 62 metre masts supporting 21,500 square feet of Dacron sail material, pushing all 5,736 gross registered tons of ship, 148 guests, 101 crew and my extensive collection of camera equipment through the South Pacific Ocean with a whispery uncomplicated ease. Just look at the wake here. Under full sail and when Windstar cut the engines, I was generally in awe of how little disturbance was emanating from the aft. It was just so quiet and peaceful. Just listen. She can actually go faster under sail than with engines alone, 15.8 knots compared to 10 using propellers. Given the obvious environmental benefits, could this both be the past and the future of cruising? Note to viewers expecting to see a classic Windstar sail deployment set to the magnificent 1492 Conquest of Paradise by the Greek composer Vangelis. I'm sorry, but due to potential copyright issues, I can't do the beautiful montage I wanted to do, but I have chosen some nearly as dramatic music that I can use. Also, rather sadly, Vangelis died only 12 days after we disembarked the ship. Nevertheless, the deployment of the sails on a Windstar ship is a treat to experience and something Windstar loved to show off. And why not? It's a beautiful process and an experience you definitely won't have on 99% of any other cruise ships. Right, now we've indulged ourselves in Wind Spirit's most obvious and most beautiful attribute, let's go back to the vlog and day three, Riotea. Apart from Papiete, Riotea has the only other deep water port for the ship to come alongside, so, well, we did. Plenty of time for a bit of exploration in the company of a rather colourful local. Following an incredibly tattooed man. So we're here overnight. There's a challenge. We've also got to keep a lookout for the world's rarest flower. Um, yes. Which is like half a flower. And it grows here. And uh, you get put in prison if you pick them. <laughs> That's basically the size of it. So they are protected by law. But let's keep a lookout for the world's rarest flower that's only indigenous to this island and that's it these are the river boats looks like these this is the river boat we're going to get on love the guy with the beard legend so the fish here we have a lot of fish uh color silver inside the rivers shrimp and eel in French water with the blue eyes. And then animals on the land. Inside the ballet, gecko, mosquitoes. <laughs> The Faro River is the only navigable river in the whole of French Polynesia, 
yes, the only navigable river in 121 islands, dispersed over an area of 1,200 miles. Therefore, it's quite popular for excursions like this one, paddleboarding and kayaking too. You could say, for river activities, hmm, it doesn't have an awful lot of competition. It does, however, get narrower and narrower, until the boat literally brushes against the overhanging leaves. And that comes with its own risks. Our boat brushed against a branch, which from it was suspended a small wasp's nest, which had unfortunately fallen into the excursion leader's lap. Rest assured, this doesn't happen often. In fact, it hasn't happened at all up to now. Thankfully, the wasps dispersed quickly into the vegetation and our brave and confident warrior quickly neutralised the remaining threat. Well, all that drama called for a drink and we stopped at a rather unusual roadside cafe for a swift half of coconut while the kayakers paddled by. And then we pulled over and guide Tihoti used the eerie silence to pay tribute to the forest, its god Tain and its life force. Alternating traditional ritual chants with the atmospheric melody of his bamboo nose flute, this ritual is in respect of and a tribute to the forest. As you may have noticed, unless you're watching with your eyes closed, Tihoti is covered from head to toe in tattoos featuring symbols of humans and animals. His half-tattooed face represents two contrasting worlds, the secular and the spiritual. This was the only time I saw Tihoti without his ancestral conch shell a large horn made from a giant shell that's been used and handed through generations of his family. If you get the chance to meet Tehoti, he's a fascinating and knowledgeable person, if slightly distracting to look at. Then on the way to a private motu for some beach time, the heavens opened and we got a full dose of liquid sunshine for a few minutes. Perhaps that's what he was chanting for. Hmm, we'll never know. A motu is a reef islet formed by broken coral and sand surrounding an atoll. These very small islands are numbered in their thousands in French Polynesia and many of them are private owned. Windstar, being a very popular and respectful business around these parts, have access to many of them for their exclusive use of their guests. So yes, we were very much the lucky ones and if you're visiting French Polynesia, no trip is complete without experiencing a motu or two. Motu or two. Hmm. More about motus in part four, where we'll experience the ultimate motu experience at Windstar's signature Destination Discovery event. It's fantastic, and I urge you to stay tuned for that one. Well, here we are on the motu. Man, that guy is trying to get rid of these wasp nests. Gosh, there he goes. Look at that. Ooh. Is he going to have that? He's going to put it in a bucket. Anyway. We're on an island, as you can see, it's just literally palm trees and uh, mosquitoes, apparently. Helen's gone up that way. She's taking the deep with her, which is great, because it means that my feet are going to get absolutely bit and alive. There's holes all over the floor, which is a bit concerning. Lessons learned today. I wish I'd have bought my um, sand shoes. It's a lovely shell, look at that. And um, that would have been really good, because this is actually quite prickly. And um, like the guy said, it's covered in mozzies, so oh, I'll go over there, see how we get on. I mean, to be fair, this is quite incredible. Literally, on a desert island in the middle of the South Pacific. Literally, wild and free. 
I don't think I've ever done anything like this before. It's amazing. It's just, it's like something out of Robinson Crusoe. Or Crusoe, as they would say, in Tahiti. Well, let's go over here and see what Helen's doing, shall we? Unfortunately today the snorkelling here was disappointing, but that didn't stop us from enjoying this day enormously. It's a proper desert island. Hmm, why wouldn't you? Soon we were heading back for more cultural surprises. There's a lot of cultural enrichment on this voyage as you've seen so far, and back on the open decks we were joined by the local Mamas and Papas group, who not only teached us how to dance, although I hid in the corner for that bit, but also showed us how to create a flower crown and lays, which are the flower necklaces that friendly locals always present you with. Also, we learned how to properly wear a pareo, a single cloth wrap that the women of the group were wrapping and tying into about 5,000 different creations. Hmm, who knew one piece of colourful cloth could be just about anything? And how do you follow that? Well, with a fabulous evening deck barbecue and a chance for some of the Windstar staff to let their hair down and have a bit of a laugh and a dance. What is it with Windstar and line dancing? Hmm. If you know, please leave us a comment. Honestly, this lot are an absolute hoot, even if the Indian did give me a few nerves that he was going to end up in the hot tub. If you're enjoying this video and are interested in knowing more about Windstar's beautiful ships in French Polynesia, our preferred travel partner is Panache Cruises, the elite ocean, expedition, river and yacht style cruising specialists. The team at Panache has decades of combined knowledge and experience in finding the right cruise for you. For a completely personal service, their dedicated cruise connoisseurs will be right at your side from the initial inquiry until you get back from your dream cruise. They will help you with every aspect of your voyage no question too big, no detail too small. Visit their beautiful website and make your next dream cruise, like the one we took on Wind Spirit, a reality. Now, back to the vlog. Out here you'd be wise not to miss any sail away, no matter how short the hop between islands. Early on day four we left Rayatea to take the short trip to our anchor off the neighbouring island of Taha'a. Well, good morning, greetings, or as they say here, you're a from the island of Taha'a, which is the uh, island that specializes in vanilla, Tahitian vanilla from the island of Taha'a. Let's make sure you get that little ah uh in the end. Well, actually, we're anchored here at the moment because today we're going to spend the whole day on that little island there. Yeah. What's that island called? Motumeha. This is Windstar's private island. And uh, who needs a private island in the Caribbean? When you have a private island in French Polynesia, I mean, how cool is that? Bring it on. Although 
with ever shore excursions in Taha'a in the morning, we decided to spend the day on the private island that Windstar had taken over for the day. And here we are on the island. This lovely chap's going to bring me a drink. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, like, wow, look at this place. Unbelievable. I just can't believe we're here. It's just such a privilege, such a blessing. Grab these two here. Little spot in the shade. Right near this little beach here for a snorkeling. And uh, most importantly, <laughs> right near the bar. Bottoms up, as they say. This way it starts getting a little bit wilder. They have a uh, full time attendant on the island that obviously cleans all the floor up, removes all the coconuts and leaves, breaks all the sand. This is the sort of island you'd want to be stranded on, not the one that we were at yesterday, which was a bit wild. Look over here, look. You can see where all the coconuts just sort of fall from the trees and just sort of land, land on the floor. We have been told just to watch ourselves, because they do fall down from the trees. They give you a nasty headache, I guess. This is the side of the island if you want seclusion. And the odd coconut falling on your head, of course. Please click these links to continue this journey with us. We'll see you in the next part.